What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer. Yesterday, Blizzard surprised us with a brand new Overwatch 2 trailer, showing off the brand new hero Junker Queen, as well as giving us an official release date for the game, along with a ton of new information and teasers for other content. And while I already did a video covering all the important aspects of it, in today's video, I wanted to do a bit more of a in-depth focus on some of the more interesting aspects from this teaser, being the details pertaining to the new Junker Queen hero, and of course, trying to discern as much as possible from that very, very brief snippet of the Kanazaka Fox Girl. So without further ado, let's jump right on in, starting off with the confirmed new hero, Junker Queen. I have to admit, it is so nice to at long last get an official image of what she's gonna look like in-game, and having said that, let's just start off with her character design. This character looks awesome. We more or less already knew what she looked like since we did have some official images of her, but seeing her finalized model in-game gives us a ton of juicy details, so let's dive into it. For starters, she of course has her giant blue mohawk, a very post-apocalyptic aesthetic going for her, and an overall rather, well muscly and rather toned design, which I know a lot of people have already gotten very excited over. A couple cool little details I think that stick out are the fact that she has an omnic hand attached to her belt around her waist. I don't know if that's supposed to be functioning as like a belt buckle of some kind, or if it's just, you know, part of her showing off her hatred for omnics. But that, in addition to what looks like the faceplate of an omnic on her shoulder above her magnet arm, is just such a great little detail to show off, well, how brutal she is specifically in the context of Omnix. Now, one thing I just mentioned, her magnetic arm, this is an interesting element of her kit. I'll be talking a bit about the leaked abilities we had for the Junker Queen, which, you know, is something I've talked about in the past because that leak is a few months old at this point. But now that we're actually sort of seeing that begin to manifest with this first reveal of the Junker Queen, we can tell that she most certainly has some sort of weird red magnetic gauntlet on her left forearm. I'm curious if they're gonna really delve into how she has this technology or what sort of technology it even really is, but we can see pretty clearly, at least in the snippet from the animated short, that yeah, this seems to be a magnet which she uses to pull her weapons towards her. And we're gonna see how that plays into her kit in just a second, but it does seem like an interesting technology choice for a Junker character specifically. Junkers are, of course, very low tech. They're supposed to be post-apocalyptic, making use of what they can. So having a high-tech magnetism type gauntlet like this seems a bit weird, but it's definitely playing very well into her kit and her abilities, which, speaking of which, let's get on to those. So using the leaked abilities and the names we had for those as a reference, we can see in the footage of the Junker Queen revealed thus far that she does in fact have some sort of scatter gun, which looks like some sort of Roadhog-esque shotgun. We don't know how much damage it's gonna do, we don't know its ammo count or anything like that yet, but just based off of this little snippet where she blasts Zenyatta in the face, we can see that, yep, scatter gun seems like it's gonna be her primary fire. We also then get a clip of her using her big axe as part of the Carnage ability, which seems like a sort of frontal AoE that deals a bunch of damage to those in front of you, and based on the information from the leak, evidently also triggers some sort of bleeding effect. We can't really see any evidence of a bleed effect happening in the clips of the Junker Queen we got in yesterday's teaser, but given that there's enough other information from the leak that is already lined up, thus that we know the leak is real, I think it's safe to say that there is a bleed effect at play with this character. Now, another interesting element looking at the leak is her adrenaline rush, which is evidently a passive she has where she heals from the bleed damage she deals. Again, that's not something we can really see here, but presumably that's going to play into her tanking ability and will help contribute to her being able to help sustain herself. Now, another ability which we see in action here from what is presumably one of her highlight intros is her serrated blade, and specifically her ability to throw it out and summon it back to herself. Again, this seems to make use of the magnetism she has on her left arm, and as we can see here, she seems to have a smaller sort of axe, which in the highlight intro, she uses to pull the camera towards her. Although in this final shot from the trailer here, we can actually see her having some sort of knife hanging by her side, which looks much more on par with the leaked icon for the serrated blade ability. So maybe this is what she actually throws out? Which means this axe we see here is perhaps just a 
shorter version of her main axe. I don't know, maybe the handle can like retract or something. But either way, it seems like she has a sort of secondary or variant form of her axe that functions as a sidearm that she can throw out independently of her big axe, which is part of her ultimate, and I'll touch on that in just a second. And basically this is a sort of thing where you can throw it out, summon it back, and boop people back towards you in the process of doing so. Similar to how a roadhog hook works. The details surrounding this aspect of her kit do seem a bit fuzzy still, just based on the details from that leak, but we can see, based on the camera motion of her yanking in the camera, that yes, there does seem to be some sort of roadhog chain hook or pull in or inward boop type effect when it comes to this part of her kit. And that brings us then to the ultimate of her kit, which is evidently called Rampage, where she swings her big axe and flies forward into the enemy. We actually get two looks at this, one from the partial gameplay footage they showed in the trailer, in addition to what is, again, probably one of her highlight intros. And yeah, she basically uses her magnet glove to grab her axe, spin it around, and then just lunge forward. According to the leak, this is also gonna apply a damage over time effect, similar to her Carnage ability, meaning that she'll likely gain healing from performing this ultimate and hitting enemy targets, and also this ability anti-heals enemies. So assuming that all the info from that leak is still relevant to whatever final version of the Queen we end up getting, it sounds like we could be seeing a pretty formidable foe. Again, we don't have any information yet about how much health she's gonna have, or what her damage numbers are gonna look like, or any of the cooldowns for her abilities, but she does indeed have a very intense sounding kit, and it's so exciting that we've finally got a bit of a sneak peek looking into how this is probably going to play out. Now, at the time of being recording this, we haven't gotten any official breakdown of like her actual kitten abilities and all that stuff. I'm assuming we're going to end up seeing that later this week on Thursday, and hopefully we'll get more info on the Queen then. But in the meantime, we're just going to have to sort of wait and see, I suppose. But moving on from the Queen, we have another exciting new hero to talk about, which is the Kanazaka Fox Girl. Now, for those of you who've been following my channel for a while, you know that I've focused on this character a lot over the years, and I am so excited excited we finally got a sneak peek of what she does slash looks like in game with just the briefest of little clips teasing and showing off her fox. Now based off of the clip we saw here, it does look like this fox is going to be some sort of spirit or energy fox of some kind. Perhaps it's going to function similarly to how Genji and Hanzo's dragons work. And in the clip, we can see it running forward through a part of Kanazaka. And as it goes, it produces these sort of ghostly cobblestones on the ground, as well as Japanese Tori gates above it. Tori gates are a part of Japanese culture that tie heavily into the Shinto religion, and they may or may not be hinting even further into to the actual abilities of this character. But after the fox runs forward, we can see four other heroes run behind it, being Zarya, Ana, Genji, and Hanzo. Now, the fact that we're looking at one tank, one support, and two damage, with one team member still missing, being a fellow support, seems to indicate to me that she is in fact going to end up being a support hero, since that would flesh out the rest of the team. Now, unfortunately, we don't seem to actually see the hero herself anywhere in this clip. We just see the other four, unless the fox is the new hero. All right, now hear me out. This is very clearly some sort of spirit fox we're seeing run forward, or an energy fox. Who knows? Magic, technology, it's Overwatch, who knows how it works. But what if this isn't just some sort of spirit companion of hers? What if this is actually the hero? Now, I'm not saying that the hero herself is a fox, but what if she turns into a fox, at least for this specific ability? For all we know, this could be the hero dashing ahead of her team and producing some sort of roadway, which I'll talk more about the roadway in just a second, but I think it's at least possible that the hero has some sort of transformation element where turn into a spirit fox, run forward, have some sort of special effects. Now, there is one caveat to this, which is that after the spirit fox runs forward in this clip, we can see it just outright vanish, which you think it would transform back into the presumably human character after it does its thing, if it is a sort of transformation, but who knows? Maybe it's like Junkrat's Rip Tire. Maybe the character either transforms into the spirit fox, or I guess maybe just control could perhaps be shifted to the spirit fox, and then the player runs as the fox wherever they want to go, and a road is generated behind them. Here we see it running straight, but what if instead it could turn to the side to generate a path in whatever formation and length 
length the player wants it to be. Then, after it's gone a set distance, or maybe this ability is cancelled by the player, the spirit fox evaporates, and then the player is back wherever they started from. This is just me spitballing here, guys. I don't know if that's what's actually going on, but it does seem like an interesting ability, and I'm very curious to see how all this spirit fox element actually ends up playing into this upcoming hero. Now, another detail to focus on is the road itself, which is generated by the fox. As a number of people have already been pointing out, we can actually see that the heroes running behind the fox along this spirit road seem to have a speed buff applied to them, as we can tell from the green aura and light that's on their feet. So, at the very least, that seems to indicate that this road generation spirit ability gives allies some sort of speed boost as they run down the given path. This could be pretty powerful, depending on how long the cooldown for this given ability ends up being, but I will say that overall it does seem a bit elaborate, simply for a speed buff. I mean, Lucio just plays a song and people around him can get a speed boost. This is building an entire sacred spirit road just for a speed boost. So I wouldn't rule out the possibility of there maybe being another effect applied to the spirit path as well, like maybe enemies in that same path are slowed down or something like that, since the fact that it generates a super pseudo-physical structure of a pathway does feel a bit prominent for just, oh, have a speed boost. I guess it could also be the case that they just wanted to design the ability like this so that it's very clear to see where the speed boost is actually going to be located, so that allies and enemies alike just have more fair information about what's going on. But I don't know, this is a very interesting one overall. I've been contemplating the Kanazaka Fox Girl for years at this point, so I'm very intrigued by seeing how this might might play into the rest of the hero's kit, and of course, what the rest of that kit ends up being. If you are interested, I have done a number of videos on the Kanazaka Fox Girl in the past. I'll have some of those linked in the cards on screen, but still, I just think it's such an interesting discussion, and I know we just got the Junker Queen as a new hero revealed, and we really should all be focusing on her, but I just can't help but feel super excited to learn more about the Kanazaka Fox Girl as well. And with that, that wraps up my in-depth, nitpicky analysis of the two new teased heroes. Thank you all so much for watching, definitely let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Do you have any of your own theories about the Kanazaka Fox Girl and Junker Queen's kit and abilities? Or maybe you're just excited that we've finally gotten some new information on new upcoming content. Either way, I'd love to hear from you, and be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any of my future Overwatch 2 content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.